Baseline to go line. I am your host, Alan Cole Beasy Colburn, and I got a special guest that I'm honored to have. Former Michigan State player, former Iowa State player, pro basketball player, founder of the State Paranoid Basketball Academy, Corey Lucius is in the building. <laughs> Welcome, bro. Yeah, okay. Appreciate you having me, bro. And I appreciate you coming, man. Um, you know it's been a long time coming, man. I've been, I, I was, I was, I was trying to get you on for the last. <laughs> I don't even know how long. How long has it been, my guy? So I remember you had it my rookie year, right? I started it back in twenty. No, it was past your rookie year because I started it back in twenty sixteen. Okay, okay. So yeah, your first. I remember when you first did it when you first came out with it. You was. I was, yeah, I was so it's been, yeah, it's it's been a minute. It's, it's been six years, six years. Yeah, man, it's, been, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. So, bro, before we uh, get into why you came here, um, everybody out there, y'all know what this is, man. This show is a vibe, right? So it's not just, you know, us talking sports. We want y'all to vibe with us. So it's, it's up, right? So everybody raise your glass, comment down below. Let us know what it is that you're sipping on. Right now I got me some tequila and some uh, lime juice. Actually, this is the Rocks Tequila, Terramana, and lime juice. Corey, what you got, bro? I got some tequila as well, some Casamigos, Blanco, of course, with a little splash of orange juice, a little splash. little splash of orange juice. I got a little splash of lime. And as always, what we toast to is to life, health, wealth, last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Yes, sir. Salute. Man, now we can get everything popping, bro. Once again, man, welcome. Um, to it. Yes, sir. Welcome, bro. Um, high school coach at Pius, too, man. How how how's the season going so far? Hey, it's going good. Uh, it's actually, you know, what I'm saying it's not. I wouldn't say as good as I would like it to be, but we working. We make, we making progress. We gotcha. working every day trying to get better. So we gonna get there. Slow progress. Slow progress is better than no progress, right? That's a fact. That's yeah, a for fact. sure. <laughs> for sure. All right, man. Let's just dive right into it, man. Um, we're gonna start from. I want to ask you before, uh, wh where are you originally from? So I'm originally from born, I was born in Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, me, my mom, and my brother, we came to Milwaukee when I was, I was still a baby, like three or four, a okay. baby, like a child or whatever the case may be. So I say I'm from Milwaukee when everybody asks me, but I was, I'm originally born, all my family, my mom's side of the family still live in Indiana. So I got ties there, of course, but. Milwaukee is home for sure. Milwaukee is home Subscribe. for sure. Yep, definitely. So, um, when did you start? When was when was your love, or when did you find out that you had a love for the game of basketball? Uh, man, that you can crazy. remember. That, that that I can remember. I remember my first real like organized basketball league I played in. I was seven, seven or eight years old. And okay. at that time, I think a little later. That's a little later than normal. Yeah, I um, you know, I, I don't know what happened. I, I randomly got in that league thanks to one of my closest friends because he lived in the neighborhood. Uh, I met him when I was, you know, birth Bree. I met him when I was seven. I think I was six or seven, and okay. you know, that's how I started playing more league, more organized basketball. But before then, I don't. I used to. It was all whatever I saw on TV, you know what I'm saying? Basketball yeah. wasn't really something that I knew I wanted to do. Um, I heard a story from my mom and my dad when I was younger. When I was two years old, I used to run on the court at McGuff Park. Okay. Everybody from Milwaukee, of course, know that park and mm -hmm. just try to play. Right. And that's how actually how my mom met my dad. Okay. Uh, he picked me up, put me up to the hoop and just let me start shooting. I guess that's when it all started, I would say, but I didn't remember nothing until like seven or eight years old. Okay. Now, was it, did you did you play anything else? Did you have another love outside of basketball or anything before you started hooping? Uh, honestly, no. Nah, I was just really just being a kid, to be honest. Okay. I didn't really get into sports until basketball. Like I played other sports after basketball when I got a little older. I played soccer. I played football. 
growing up, but before I started hooping, I don't I don't remember playing. I don't I can't remember thinking of any type of sport to be honest. Okay. Okay. So growing up basketball, um you said your first organized basketball was just on a whim. It was some shit that you ain't even you just got thrown into a league or whatever, right? So Yeah. Um, who when did you start playing like at the competitive level? Like when did you start really saying, Okay, this is this is I don't want to necessarily say it's something that at this point in time that I'm speaking of that you knew um, you had something, but when did you really start playing at a more competitive level and who was it with? Uh, I mean, I would say when I was, so my brother is three years older than me. Okay. So he, when we were growing up, we were moved. I went to Whitefish Bay Middle School. He went to a school called Stephan. I was in Mequon. So of course they have like those little league, little league games and teams and stuff like that with the area schools and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think it was maybe his sixth grade year, maybe seventh grade. I don't know, but I used to go and play with them. Okay. So at that point in time, it was sixth and seventh grade. What was you like fourth? Uh, Maybe fifth? Probably third. third. Oh, third, fourth. Okay. Yep. Yep. Third grade. I remember going to play with them. And even in Whitefish Bay, we had like little league teams and stuff like that. So I used to play. So dang, man. Competitively, so yeah, I like, probably would have to say like, man, it, it, that, that's a tough question. Okay, that's, that's kind of a tough question because I play, like I said, I played in those leagues, and I knew when I started playing in that league at seven to eight years old, I knew it was like this is what I'm doing is basketball. Oh, so you, you knew what that? Time, early. You knew what that? Me and my pops, yeah, I knew that early because after I played in those leagues, me and my pops just started going to the gym workout work out all right this is what you want to do yeah i want to hoop okay all right we're gonna do it so okay. I, I i would i shit i would probably say seven eight years old nine ten years old was when i really started okay and growing up um aau affiliations what was your aau affiliations and i'm still talking about so we're not even talking about high school yet because we definitely gonna get to there yet because it's a crazy ass story that y'all need to hear about <laughs> so we're gonna definitely get to that but um, leading up to high school, who was your AAU affiliates? So back then we were called when I first started, I started playing AAU in fourth grade was my first year. Even before that, I never played AAU. I just played leagues and stuff like that. So fourth right. grade year, we, I played with Young Lions. That was the name of our team. Um, I was actually at the YMCA working out and some, this guy I knew was there who knew about Young Lions was like, hey, yo, you should, he knew my dad, so he told my dad, like, Tone, you need to go take him to this tryout. You know what I'm saying? He should be here be good with him. And right. at the time, I don't know if you know, Marty McLaughlin was our coach. And he yeah. ran the whole program. Right. Yeah. right. So he wrote, he, he ran the whole program, and he was our coach. So I went to the tryout and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Was the best player there at fourth grade, even though we had some players that were good, too. But I was, you know what I'm saying, I was the best player there. And it, it was curtains ever since then. So, yeah. Was it Lions, was was it with your age group? Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. That, that, like the tryout and stuff was my age group, yeah. Okay. But, you know what I'm saying? I, later on down the line, if you want to get into it, I did play. No, we're going to get into everything. We're okay, into okay, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, that was with my age group then. Yeah. Okay. So, no, no. So, expand on what, what you were saying as far as the um, later on down the line, you started playing with the higher ups. That probably started, I'd say, in like sixth grade, to be honest. Okay. At, and fourth grade, I knew I had something. The team I was on, we we played up in all our tournaments. Fourth grade, we was in fourth grade, played fifth grade, sixth grade tournaments until okay. we got to like nationals or state. Then you okay. got to play your age group. Right, of course. So of we course. played fourth grade year. We went to nationals. We took second, and it was a big tournament. I got a hundred and some teams. I got I got to show you something real quick before we finish this because something triggered me right with what you just said. So I got to share something with you, and tell me. What you think about this, bro? Oh, my boy, Irv. Yes, it is. Is there a favorite player you like playing against the most? To play against? Uh, coming up, when I can give you young coming up from about maybe throughout high school, a kid, Corey Lucius, he went to Michigan State. But he always brought out the best of me. We had a lot of battles from 
from the sixth grade nationals, we played them in the semifinals. So we had that was always a fun competition for me. Why was that? Why was it such a good competition? I don't know. I think we just brought the best out of each other while playing against each other, and it was one of those things. Young, we were always, you know, like one of the main players on our team, and it, we would always meet far. And it, you know, like the nationals, that was the big thing for us at a young age. And we, so it was always, you know, like me versus him. And then as we got older, you know, the battles just continued. So it started from young. Yo, so love right there, right? So love right there, and it's crazy because what triggered me to show you this um, at this point in time was because you said sixth grade, and you said coming up in AAU and going to nationals or whatever. He ended up going to Florida, right? Yep, yep, yep. He ended up going to Florida. What? How did you? What? What? How does that make you feel? Man, I've you know what I'm saying I've, I've I've heard about that story before. Somebody told me that that was out there. I've never seen it, but it, it makes me feel good to be honest. Like for people to bring my name up and whatever they got going on, for sure, uh, to talk about something that young when we were that young, it's it's, it's so it feels good because we did we had some battles with them. That's and at the time, like a lot of people don't know, Lance Stevenson was on that team with him. No, the Lance funny thing was, is before uh, prior to um, we get into that part about Corey Lucius because the interview was a little bit long, so I cut it short. He mentioned Lance Stevenson and he mentioned Kemba Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned Kemba. I don't. I don't. I think he said he played against Kemba. Yeah, but Kemba wasn't on that team. Yeah, he said Lance was on his team because he's from New York, yeah. right? Yep, yeah, yeah. So Lance was on his team from four, fifth, six, all that. And mm-hmm. yet Lance was always a year younger than us, though. Right, right. So Lance was just on the team, a young boy, really, with the same Lance as he is now. Yeah, dancing on the court. Yeah, flamboyant, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flamboyant, talking. That Coney Island, Island shit. The same way. He was the that same Coney way. Shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Sorry for the break, man. I, you know, I got to give you your flowers, bro. Got to give you your flowers. Yeah, you bro. You that. But yeah, keep going and expounding on the uh, AAU portion. And then we'll jump after this. We'll jump into um, the beginning of your high school journey. For sure. So, yeah, uh, like I said we, we went to nationals and stuff. Fourth grade took second, I think, or third, something like that. Uh, fifth grade came close again. Then for sixth grade, we actually won it. You know, that was the year we won nationals out of whatever, however many teams. We beat Master P team, Lil Romeo, and then DeMar DeRozan was on that team. So we played against a couple a couple powerhouse dudes. And, of course, we being from Milwaukee, we wasn't that big way back right, then. For sure, we for wasn't, sure. Milwaukee wasn't really producing a lot of bigs like that uh, back that, then either. That would have been what, in um, maybe 2000? No, 90, uh, maybe 99? No. So sixth, my freshman year of high school was 04. So sixth grade so sixth grade was 01, 2000, 2001, okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know what I'm saying? after I knew from like fourth, fifth grade, I knew I had something I play. I knew my age level in the area and surrounding areas wasn't going to be enough to get me where I wanted to go. My dad knew that. I knew that. My Marty knew that. My coaches. So Marty coached us, the fourth grade team, fifth grade team, all the way up, and he coached the older guys. Like I don't know if you know Dupree Fletcher, mm-hmm. uh, both of the Flowers brothers that went to uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. Uh, my like Khalif, uh, Khalil, Khalil, Khalif. That's from here. He was mm-hmm. on that team. It was a bunch of older guys on our team, but I was on that team. Like Marty, if we had a tournament at the same place. I would play our games as a sixth grader and go play with the freshmen and our 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 our, our six teams while I'm still twelve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what you holding your phone? Still killing. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. For sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. killing. Yeah. Talk your shit. I like it. I like I, it. Yeah, I was killing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's what. At a young age, I already knew. Like, I put so much work in, and you know what I'm saying. I I thank God every day that He did bless me with this talent, and for me to be go out and build on it. I was just a workaholic. My Let dad me had me you, in the gym. Do you think you had a, um, with all the work and shit that you was doing as a kid, right? Do you mm-hmm. think you had a quote unquote regular childhood then? Uh, no. Because okay. at that age, I was traveling. I did. I did. I I experienced a lot of stuff that a lot of people wouldn't already. Like I was going to. I wasn't even playing in the ABCD camp at the time. Like I said, I was like sixth grade, but I was flying out with Marty 
to go watch the Darius Washington, the Sebastian Telford, the White Howards, the Josh Smiths while they in high school at this all-star camp. So mm-hmm. I was able to go travel the world and go see, not the world, but you know what I'm saying, the United yeah, States and go see yeah. stuff like that, yeah, including yeah. our own tournaments. We having tournaments in Florida and Dallas and I'm in fourth grade, fifth grade. It's like it's kids these days that still don't even, you know, they still think that Dallas is out of the country. <laughs> I guess, I guess more so what I meant by, and that's dope, but what I meant by kind of a regular childhood was um the fun of it. Like, did it did the basketball at that point in time, did it become more of a job, it seemed as if, or was it still something that was kind of a hobby and fun to you? Because I know you was, was you mentioned before that you was training so much with your father. And sometimes what ends up happening, the reason why I'm asking this, especially for the kids that's watching too, sometimes they will they will see or their parents will put so much pressure on them to do this that they steer away from it. That they don't want to do it no more. Exactly. Yet. So that's the reason why I asked. Yeah. Uh, I this is uh me and my dad, so he was tough on me. Right. My dad was super tough on me, but at the same time, I knew this was something that I wanted to do. So I didn't really steer away with it. We had, we, you know what I'm saying? We clashed a lot, clashed a like, lot, clashed like a Jay lot. Sh- like Jake Shuttlesworth and, and Jesus? Yep, yep. <laughs> but at the, the same type of shit, the same right. type of shit. But at the end of the day, I knew he wanted me to get to where I knew I wanted to go. Got you. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So I had this dream that I wanted to get here, and he knew that. Mm-hmm. And I knew he had my best interest in me. I think nowadays kids might be a little more, you know what I'm saying, a little softer. And you can't really put that type of pressure on kids these days like that. You right. really got to kind of let them choose. And I've come the to video game out. Yeah. yeah, video yeah. Game I've out. come to see that just through, you know what I'm saying, just through what's going on with these kids now because they worth that thing even nowadays. It's not like it's not how ours was. Okay. You might catch a, a couple here and there, but mm-hmm. I was in the gym. I don't care if I'm in season or not. I'm working out before or after my game or practice. Nowadays, they think practice is just enough and it's not the same. So, what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's, yeah. No. So get, just getting back to your point, as far as a regular childhood and having fun with the game, I still love the game. I had a lot of fun playing. It didn't really get to a business until I got older, but AAU was still fun for sure. Basketball was still fun when I was still young. Is, is it still fun for you right now? Oh yeah, still okay. fun. I love okay. it. I Got love it. it. Got it. Um, what? At what point in time did you get with um, Devin Harris's AAU team? Because well, Legend has it, and and tell me and correct me if I'm wrong with this. Is that the reason why you wear 34? Is because of Devin Harris? That's it is. But okay. that was from when Devin went to Tulsa East. Like I said, Mark, he played on our older AAU right, team. Right, right, right. He was coaching him. Right. So I used to go to all the Devin high school games. Yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to go to his high school games when he got to college, all his college games, and he wore 34. So, yeah. That I kind of, I ain't going to lie, I idolized him. Okay, cool. No, 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 for sure. Player. Yeah, yeah. He was from Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. He was cold. I thought he was cold. So, 34 was my number. But when I first started playing AAU, though, my first number was eight. Kobe. Kobe, yeah. I'm a Kobe fan. I've yeah. been a Kobe fan since his rookie year when he went down the lane and dunked on Ben Wallace in the preseason. Got you. His rookie year. Yeah, yeah. So, but Devin, that's exactly why I wore 34. But Don't worry about it. We're going to tap in on the NBA a little bit later because yeah. I got some questions. Yeah, yeah. Ask, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 34 yeah. because of Devin Harris. And when when did you start playing for his AAU team? So it, it never was Devin's team. Okay. We were, still D, we were still DTA at the time. So young, we were still young Lions. We changed it turned into his team, DTA. right? Did it turn into his team yeah. later? Yep, and then we okay. changed our name to D. Harris All-Stars, probably like my sophomore, junior year in high school. Okay, so we'll get to there in a second. So so you know in Milwaukee, it's like a tug and pull with the better players in the area as to what high schools and everything that they're going to go to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so leading up to high school, I would say like your middle, your 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 eighth grade year, seventh and eighth grade year, did you have an idea as to where you wanted to go right away or was it still kind of up in the air? Yeah, so this is where basketball kind of started becoming a business. Okay. Not really, but kind of. Oh, I get what you're saying. 
I get you what you're saying. So I was in seventh, eighth grade. Like I said, my mom sent me to off the white fish base in second grade. I was out there from second all the way to eighth grade. Okay. My brother went to Mequon or whatever case may be. So I've always, when I was at Whitefish Bay Middle School, I'm like, I'm going to the middle school. Even while I'm playing, I I never really had high school mm-hmm. conversations until like my eighth grade year. Oh, so you were saying that you were going to the Whitefish Bay High School? You had yeah, it in mind. Right. Got you. Yeah, I had it in my mind all along. So I'm at high school. I've been here through middle school, elementary, middle school. I'm going to go to the high school. Mm-hmm. So about eighth grade year come around, even even before our season started, like eighth year, grade year, I, I like right when school started type and type shit. So this is when school started coming around. Mm-hmm. And of course my AAU coach at the time, who was Marty, he had a lot of, you know, everybody knew me, everybody knew him because of our program, what we did in the state, who I was and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, where are he going? And since I was already out in the North Shore area, I ain't gonna lie, it wasn't a lot of schools that was just like, all right, come here, come here, come here, come here, like college. It was between Nicolay, Whitefish Bay. Whitefish Bay was kind of out of the picture, not gonna lie, my after eighth grade, it was over. Wife, it was between Nicolay and really King. What why why did you say uh Whitefish Bay was out of the picture after your eighth grade year? Nah, uh, because we had my AAU coach basically, we was gonna send a couple of our players to a school. Okay. And it wasn't gonna work at Whitefish Bay. Got you. It wasn't gonna work at Whitefish Bay. It wasn't gonna, it was gonna let y'all get y'all shit off. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it was over. That shit okay. wasn't gonna work at okay. all. So it, it was, you know, what I'm saying it was over between for Whitefish Bay all along. Eight oh, grade years dead. So you ultimately choose King initially. Mm-hmm. What drew you to King initially? All right. So another thing. So I say my seventh grade year in middle school, I go to King's Open Gym. At the time, I think this was like Laniel Harris, uh, Troy Cotton, uh, uh, James Pruitt. This is all like they freshman year. They already freshmen. Right. They already been playing and stuff like that. So I go to an uh, open gym, shredding these niggas, busting their ass. Mm-hmm. Busting their ass. So, you know what I'm saying? I think that was when Coach Guys started asking Marty about me and okay. my dad. Like, yeah. all right, what school he going to, what's going on with him. Of course, we heard of him, but you mm-hmm. know, we he was in seventh, sixth, seventh grade. We ain't thinking of that. But right. after I went to that open gym, that's when King started coming around in the picture and stuff like that. And they didn't really say – I didn't really have it in my mind that I was going there because, like I said, I still thought I was going to go to Whitefish Bay. I thought I was just going to open gym. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to play against some high school players. Did did they set this up on purpose? The people that you that took you there? Uh, probably. Okay. Yeah. okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. I'm sure they because it was like a it was I don't even think they was in season. It was like just open gym, but they had already been. You know, they played their season already or something yeah, like that. Some they had the team already. I got you. So they said, you know, what I'm saying Marty hit me like we finna go up to King for this open gym mm-hmm. play against their players. I'm like, all right, bet. Let's go hoop. Go up there, bust their ass. <laughs> and I, after freshman year, I mean, not freshman year, uh, eighth grade year, King come back around because it was over for any NPS school. But I'm not going no NPS. My mom was not having that. Right. So for great education, purpose, right? Education purposes. Yeah, okay, that education right. purposes, yeah, gotcha. pretty much. So it was over for any NPS schools. And once I knew Nicolay, I don't know what happened with Nicolay, to be honest. I really don't remember, but me and my guys ended up getting into King. So we all just ended up going to King. Okay. So your freshman year, you at King. Who else is at King with you your freshman year? Uh, whew, me. You talking about on the team? On the team. On the team. My freshman year is me, Troy Cotton, Laniel Harris, Mitchell Carter, uh, James Pruitt, uh, Mike Rogers, Emmett Smith. Now, uh. I forgot Emmett's last name, but Emmett was on the team. I think this is like his junior, senior year. Uh, we had a big, another big dude, Eric. Mm-hmm. Brian Brown played with us. Um, I can't remember no, too many more. But okay. We had a we had a strap. Did you come in starting right away? Yeah. What did you average your freshman year? 
First of all, how was the experience going up against playing against grown ass men at this point? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're coming in as a freshman starting at on on high school. What was it like? I don't want to necessarily say grown because you still got sophomores, juniors, or whatever. Yeah. You, have, you have seniors who are turning 18 or are 18 at this point in time. How was it for you? Man, you gotta think this is city conference. Like, True, that's, that's, what I'm good. that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't gonna lie, it was it was easy. I didn't okay. score a lot just because of our team. Yeah. If our team was less, I could have scored. I probably could have averaged 15 easy. Okay. What did you have to do for I, Remember? Uh probably like nine. Okay. It wasn't nothing too good. It was like nine. I think something like that. I think maybe twelve, maybe. One of those years, so either freshman or sophomore year, I averaged like twelve. Okay. One of them years it was less or something, but it was easy though because I had been doing it for so long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I'm like I was playing against older guys since sixth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and AAU, and these are guys from different states who are six eight, six nine, yeah, yeah. strong. You know what I'm saying? So, do you remember when I started playing varsity my freshman year? Was, you know, I was like, all right. Do you remember your measurements as a um, as a freshman? No, nah, I probably, honestly, I was. I might have been this height, maybe an inch shorter. Okay. I didn't grow much. I I didn't, I, I stopped growing probably like ninth, tenth grade. Okay. It was over. So, so I was probably this height, but I was one sixty maybe. Five eleven, six foot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Freshman. Okay. So your sophomore year comes around. First of all, let's let's go back. Summer of your freshman year, on the AAU circuit. Um, how did that go for you? And when did you let me? When did you? When did you get your first letter? All right, so we gotta go back. Wait a minute, no, time out. We gotta go back for your first letter? No, yeah, I got my first letter. I got my first couple letters in like eighth grade. From where? I never forget. I never forget. I was in school at Whitefish Bay. I was in class. I don't remember what class, but they called me to the office. I was a good kid. You know what I'm I don't do stuff to get in trouble. You know what I mean? All right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Why are they right. calling me to the office, bro? I ain't did nothing. I ain't right. did nothing. Right. So I get to the office. They like, yeah, we got this letter. Ooh, this uh, letter from this school, UCLA. So uh, you know, UCLA was my first, my first letter in eighth grade. My okay. first letter from any school was in eighth grade from UCLA. They called me out of class. I go to the office. It's a letter saying they interested. Of course, they didn't offer nothing at that time. But of course, of course. Showing, yes, we are interested. The, the usual letters that they send. But mm -hmm. yeah, that was the first one. And you but, said two though, right? Uh, it was two. Um, I just remember that one to be honest because it was UCLA because one. it was so big. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got yeah. you. But okay. the, the the other ones came later, in my eighth grade year, probably a little after two though. So, do you remember any of those? The schools after after your um after UCLA, like later on in your eighth grade year. Every school in oh the eighth grade year, uh, I think Illinois might have been one. Mm -hmm. uh, Marquette probably was one because I knew Cream just okay. because I was around. You know what I'm saying? So they sent one Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, yeah. So like I saw that you was about to say something too. I, I saw I saw your face. You was about to get into your bag for a second, but we go. I'm gonna let you do this in a second. Because <laughs> I want you to get into your bag. See, this is the thing. If y'all don't know that, don't know him. Don't know about Corey. This is a. I consider him a personal friend and a brother to me, right? So for y'all that don't know about this dude, he is the most humble, non-caring about what he's done in the past dude, and I'm here to give him his flowers. So this is the reason why we're doing this interview. <laughs> about that slurp or nothing, bro. Drink to that, matter of fact. Yeah, I'm going to take a drink too. So that's the reason why I wanted to get him on this interview. But okay, so fast forward, we're going to go, let's just go to your sophomore year. And, uh, but, um, before we even get there, you was asking me about my freshman year. AAU, we need to go back. So, eighth grade year at AAU, you know what I'm saying? I think, was it eighth grade? I, was the, I think eighth grade, I was the number one player in the country. I go to this camp. It's the Adidas camp at the time. It used to be ABCD, but that's when they split up. Right, they and split Reebok up. took it over. Yep. And then Adidas got their own camp. So, Adidas, they held a camp and don't remember where we, we were. But as an eighth grader, I was the only eighth grader there. You was the number one player in the country when? In eighth grade? Yep, in eighth grade. Okay. Talk. So at the end of... Talk. Huh? Talk. I love it. Talk, bro. Talk. So I go to this Adidas camp. I get invited to this Adidas camp, of course. Mm -hmm. Only eighth grader there at the camp. 
only eighth grader there. It's all high school players. Mario Chalmers, Greg Paulus, if you remember. Yep. Uh, Terrence Williams that went to Louisville. Hmm. Um, both Lopez brothers. Funny thing, Mario Chalmers and I think it was I think defense. Robin Lopez was on my team at the camp. Okay. And, of course, at that time, Mario Chalmers is one of the top players in the country. Okay. I think he might have been a sophomore or junior in high school already. Okay. Top players in the country. So he was getting plenty pub. All the pub, all the, everybody was there. All the colleges was there watching him play. Mm -hmm. I'm an eighth grader there, but I'm on his team and I'm playing, though. And I'm killing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Alan, I'm, I'm killing. I'm yeah, talk, talk, I'm at, talk. I make the All-Star game top 20. Oh they wow! Top 40, they had a top forty game and then a top twenty game. I made top twenty. I'm the top killing. 20. Yeah, I love it. I'm love yelling. It. I'm fucking, bro. I'm, I'm fucking niggas up. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going crazy. But I think that's really when a lot of stuff started going for me too. But you know, what I'm saying a, a, a big moment that all, a lot of my guys talk about. This is probably one of my first like bodies I caught in the game. So we playing, you know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm the eighth grader, so you know, they not passing me the ball like that. Mm -hmm. Even though I was killing the whole camp. Mm -hmm. They ain't really giving me the ball. Mike Beasley was there at the time. I, I forgot my, my guy, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not getting the ball. I'm like, all right, whatever I'm in. I'm running up and down. I might have got like maybe a shot or two, you know, but I'm not getting the ball. One dude, we running down. He on the right wing. I'm on the left. You pull up for a deep tray, boom. So you know what I'm saying. If you're a basketball player, a smart basketball player, ba smart basketball player, if somebody shoots from the right side, it's coming on the left. It's coming on the left. If you shoot on the left, it's coming on the right. Right. Boy, he he it came off on the right on the left side, and guess what I did? You, you took off. You took uh, off. And you got right hand of God on both. Oh, uh, I'm go ahead, hand. bro. Talk. Both Talk. Of my children. Talk. <laughs> Caught it over, got six nine. Yeah, six, nine. At the time, yeah, ten five eleven on his back. Yeah, throw that motherfucker in, bro. Yeah, bro. Crowd go crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh. I love it, bro. I love it. Yeah. For no, sure, what, I love probably it. Probably one of my. One of my highlights of my basketball. And this is probably why this happened. Then this this is probably why this happened because on March thirtieth. 2004. Oh, okay. I thought you was about to get something up. No, I, no. March 30th, 2004. This is when you was featured in um, the sports section as a phenom in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I had a DTA shirt on. Uh, I don't know what shirt you had on. I'm just reading okay. the article that you was that you was there March 14th, yeah. 2000, um, 2000. And four. So with this, now you get in a pub. This is when you get in a pub. Like this is March 4th, 2004. You still a freshman in high school, correct? Yep. Okay. So this is after your freshman or closer to your freshman season. So this is leading up to your sophomore season. Sophomore season comes along. Take it from there. I ain't even lying. Cause I've been buzzing since sixth grade. I was in Sports Illustrated in sixth grade. You was a sports illustrator, yeah. sixth grade? Okay. You didn't even know that, did you? No, I didn't. I didn't know that I one. I had a whole section of kids sports illustrated in sixth grade. Oh wow, that's dope. That's dope, bro. Yeah, that's yeah. that's 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 dope. Back, woo, boy, that's. Back in, back in. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> that's dope, man. We gonna uh, we gonna drink to that. Yeah, for sure. I did all my sure. homework, and I didn't even know that one, man. Good way to catch mm -hmm. me off guard. Mm hmm. No, yeah. So like I said, man, I. I knew I was cold at an early age just because of all of the stuff that was going on. Like, a Kids Sports Illustrated. We had already been traveling AAU, so Kids Sports Illustrated. I'm in magazines. I'm doing, so, I'm going to camps as a youngin. To, with these it wasn't motors. sinking in like to, what like what magnitude it was. Was all of this sinking in as to what this was, what was happening? Because you was, or were you just like, okay, I'm in a magazine. It, it didn't matter, you know, like, cause, cause right now with the social media area, right? The social media era, if somebody in sixth grade in a magazine, it's all type of shit that's going to come to them. They're going to start getting mad followers on Instagram and all of that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all of this other stuff. So now it's a different beast. 
back then we were kind of coddled because we didn't have social media and everything. So we were kind of, I don't want to necessarily say coddled, but we were protected from a lot of stuff. Yeah. Was it sinking into you what was like the magnitude of everything? No, nah, not not really because uh, only, to be honest, only when I would go out of state. Really? Like, because a lot of people around the state, of course, they knew I was nice. Mm-hmm. They didn't know what was going on as far as the Sports Illustrated and all that other stuff. But when I went to other states to play other teams and then other teams from other cities coming into that same place to play, that's mm-hmm. when that really got, that's when it really started sinking in. Like, okay, yeah, you really cold because yeah. these guys, you know what I'm saying, they top in the same class and they coming up to me like, bro, you nice, your team nice. Yeah, yeah. You got game, move this, move that, really showing love. Yeah, That's when I really was like, that's when it really started hitting me like, okay, Corey, you doing something right. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You got to keep going. What, what, around what time was this? Was this your freshman year, your sophomore year? Was it earlier than that? What, what time was this, Man, this happening? This is earlier than that. This is, okay. like I said, early AAU days. Okay, all right. Early AAU days. But so, uh, ahead, as, as far as when I got to, like, high school, the love in the city was crazy. Yeah. The love in the city was crazy. Everybody, everybody knew, like, yeah, like, dog cold. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Because, yeah. I mean, I, of course, I heard about you, you know, and, and at this point in time, in 2007, I'm 20, I'm 2007, I'm 27 years old. And I was hearing about you, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and, and so it was, it was, it, it was crazy. It was super crazy around that time. I, 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 I even caught a couple of your games as a, when you were um, at King and then, Later on, which we'll get to here in a second, when you ended up transferring because yeah. um, the the transfer situation. So sophomore year comes mm-hmm. and something happened as to you not wanting to be at King anymore. What was it? So it was a little situation. We uh, So at King, we was top one of the top teams in the country. Like okay. ranked, not even in the state, top teams in the country. Okay. Uh, after my freshman year, but so we go, we have an out of state tournaments. We end up going to South Carolina. At uh, we played in some tournament, but we played against some good teams. Daddy is young. We played against Daddy is young. Uh, Javaris Crittenton, if you remember who that is from Atlanta, he played with, in the uh, Georgia Tech. My guy that got in trouble with uh with with, with uh, the Wizards, Gilbert Arenas, yeah, with the Gilbert Wizards, Gilbert Arenas, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we played against some top teams there, so. Whatever, uh, that's beside the point. Whatever, we had a situation where we brought, I'm not gonna lie, we had some girls in our room. Mm. And we, it was me, myself, I'm not gonna name no names, but a couple yeah, other sure. players, uh, a couple other starters was on the team, and we had some girls in our room. You know what I'm saying? We, we didn't get caught. Actually, the driver who was taking us to the gym and stuff was the one who saw them coming out of our room. We didn't, so we didn't do nothing, to be honest. We didn't do nothing with it. If I would have got no one. What I know now to get, I got in trouble. I, I should have did so. You should have did something. I, right. I should have did so. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, right. You know, we didn't do nothing. We just met the chicks. They came over, chill for a little bit, and they left. But the driver ended up seeing them, um, getting back to the coach, or the case may be. So we get back to the to to Milwaukee. Of mm-hmm. course, we got missed games. We got to get in trouble. You ain't know, supposed to have girls in your room. Whatever. That's cool. I, I'm fine with that. I take my consequences. I did wrong. I'm not that type of person or player to be, oh, hell no, I'm not. No, right, no, right, no. Right. All right, I did wrong. You know what I'm saying? Right, we right. all got caught. We had to sit out a couple games. I think it was one or two games. But my dad tried to make an example. Like, I don't take my son, even though he's this player. I don't give a, I don't give a fuck. If he's wrong, he's wrong. So my dad ended up making me sit like an extra game. Mm. Yeah, so my dad had me sit like an extra game. It might have been two games, but I think okay. it was just an extra game. So. After I came back from that suspension or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. it was over. My minutes just decreased. Decreased. Uh, guys, decreased. Okay. Yes. My minutes decreased. I was a starter at the time. I wasn't starting no more. I started playing like 10 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. You know me. I'm Still. not a cocky or arrogant person. Mm-hmm. So I had a meeting with guys, and I simply asked him, uh, like, what's going on? And, it, of course, he brought back the situation that happened in South Carolina, which was totally fine. But 
he didn't really have an answer for me as to why it's still going on. Like I served mm-hmm. my suspension. Like, why are you not playing me? Mm-hmm. But I, it don't make no sense. Mm-hmm. Not to boast, you know what I'm saying? Not to sit here and stump on oh, you. I got bro, you. No, no, it makes sense. I'm Corey Lucius, bro. Why right. aren't you playing me, bro? Yeah. I'm Corey Lucius for real. I should be playing. I should be playing. I'm playing 10 minutes a game. Terrible. 10 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, we in the meeting and I, I pretty much tell them, like, if, if you're going to play me like this, I'm going to leave after this year. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave. I, I'm not going to sit here and let you. We had upperclassmen or whatever case may be, but I'm not going to sit behind the bench when I know I was supposed to be playing. Right. I don't care what you waiting on next year. I don't have next year. I whatever. Right. I, I won't even waste my time with you next year. I'll go somewhere else. Right. So that conversation happened, and I thought my minutes would have went up. They didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we finished the year going upstate. We actually went upstate that year. I still didn't start, mm-hmm. but the game that we lost in the semis to Madison Memorial this is when they had Keaton and Cabell, um, uh, main, both of the Mayman brothers, if you remember yep. them. Yep. Uh, I think Vander might have been on that team, but Vander was young at the time. I think Vander was like a freshman maybe. Okay. I think he was on that team or a sophomore or something like that. So I think I came off the bench and I had like 18. Mm-hmm. I had like 12. No, I was killing in the first half. I probably had like 20-something that game, I think, maybe 20. But I was killing in the first half, and I'm thinking like, all right, whatever. We go back out there. I'm starting the second half. Didn't mm-hmm. start. I ended up killing. Nobody else did nothing. And after that, I'm like, yeah, I'm gone. I'm okay. gone. So the decision for Pius, what, what brought that about? Uh, Because it was you and a couple other people, right, that ended up going to Pius, right? Yeah, yeah. So you could imagine it was a rat race with teams when everybody found out I was transferring. Okay. It was a rat race. It was real. That's when the real deal became like college. Okay. Sc- schools everywhere. Schools where I wasn't even living in the same county. Okay. Waukesha North, Waukesha South, oh, wow. Catholic Memorial, Tulsa West, Tulsa East, uh, Marquette. Uh, mm-hmm. You name it, they was they wanted me to come there. Right. So Pius actually, I don't know how Pius actually came around, but if you remember D'Angelo Jackson, Donovan Jackson's older brother. Okay, okay. He was I don't know what you're talking about, but I know the I know I know uh no. what's yeah, okay. Yeah, so D'Angelo had some game. He had okay. some game. D'Angelo was cold and he kinda he wasn't I was, you know what I'm saying, he had some game. Mm-hmm. He wasn't me. Okay. But he had some game. So D'Angelo was cold. And the way my the way that my coach at Pius let him play, mm-hmm. I went to a couple of their games at the time. I don't even know how. To be honest, I don't know how my dad even said or brought up Pius. I don't even know how Pius came into conversation. Okay. But we ended up going to some games and stuff, and I liked how he let D'Angelo play. Okay. He was just letting him hoop. Like, mm-hmm. of course, it was a system, in the, but but he put the ball in his hands and let him go. So I was right. like, yeah. And they ended up playing King, a uh, game I ended up going to watch. They went, they played King at South Division. It was like in the, the playoffs. King ended up winning, but D'Angelo was killing. Okay. The whole student section was sent signs for me, like, yeah, come to buy it. Wait a minute, so you didn't play in the king shit. game? Huh? You didn't play in that king game? Yeah, I played. That was when, after my junior year, or was it my senior year we played them? My senior year at Vincent? No, so what I'm saying, though, is when you said that, the, that they were, um, we want Lucius or whatever, were you actually playing for king? No. Nah. What happened? No. Nah. This was after I was. Did I have to? Um, did I transfer yet? No, because I was after it. It. I don't know how it happened. What was this? I don't remember. I okay. Man, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. But I went to the because, game. Man, what I'm thinking is, Maybe. if if they was playing Pius, if Pius was playing King, go ahead. You know what? I was playing. But they I had signs. Plan. They had signs. How did they know that you were going to be transferring though? Word got out probably somehow, some way. Okay. 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 Word got. Yeah. I was playing that game because okay. after the game, I think we ended up. Did we beat them? Yeah, I think we ended up beating them or whatever. But it was at South Division, and everybody was coming. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, I did play that game. I did. Okay. I did. Okay. Um. So now you're at Pius, right? Yeah. And. 
junior year, you played well. And I'm I'm kind of I'm going to speed past this a little bit because I want to get to the college days and and all of that, okay? So, yeah. You played well in, in at Pius. You played well your, your your junior year and your senior year, but neither one of those led y'all to go upstate, right? Yeah. Um, but during this point in time, and like I said, I want to kind of speed past this a little bit, but during this point in time, of course, more colleges and everything started coming into play. Um, what was your – who showed interest in you at this point in time? First of all – let me, let's 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 check this out really quick. I want to I want to show you something real quick. Two things I want to show you. Matter of fact, tell me if you remember this. Does this look familiar to you? <laughs> That's what you was talking about. Yeah, when I played at the uh, at the uh, yeah down in, in Colorado when I went to the USA stuff. The okay. So just, I was out there yeah, just look at it. Crazy. Names: <laughs> Afro Camino. Uh, who else is on here? Ed Davis, Demarcus Cousins. Yeah, yeah. Tyreek Evans. Yeah. E Banks, Drew Gooden. Uh, I just want you to look at this real quick. Drew Holiday. Yeah. And then here you are, Corey Lucius, number nine player in the country at the time. Yeah, number nine player in the country at the time. Personal school. Uh, we don't need to get into your personal information and all of that stuff. <laughs> Where's number thirty-four because of Darren Harris, Devin Harris? Favorite basketball or favorite sport outside of basketball is soccer. I never would have guessed that. Yes, sir. Kobe Bryant, all-time favorite player. Dallas Mavericks. I'm assuming because of uh, Devin. Yeah, it was because of Devin at the time. Greg Paulus was the best player you ever played against. I'm sure that's going to change. I'm sure that that may have changed because I'm going to ask you about that later on down the line. Yeah. So you want to play one on one against Kobe. Magic Johnson was the most impressive person you ever met. For people who don't know, I'm kind of shy. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man. Uh, so do you remember this? I do. Okay. You now do remember that this. Now that you bring it up, yeah, I do. I was, I was 165. I was a little. Yeah, 165. And then, so at this point in time, um, after so after your senior year, right? After your senior year, no, I'm sorry. While you're at Pius, let's just go back to while you're at Pius. The teams, the college teams that show interest. What were what were those college teams that actually show interest in you? Um, I'm not gonna lie, man. It was if I could name them all, I would. But just give me your top five. The top five schools that I. That you were the most that you, interest, yeah, that uh, you were thinking about Georgetown. So Michigan State was always number one. Florida was two. Georgetown was in the mix. Uh, uh, Clemson was in the mix, um, just for just for other reasons and stuff. But uh, who else? Florida State was in the mix. Check this out. Uh, a lot of West Coast teams was in the mix. ESPN, you were 78th in the country at this point in time. Senior year. Yeah, this what was year this? this was uh your senior year, class of, class of 2008. Mm -hmm. And this is where, you know, 78th in the country. How did you do you know do you remember how you went from ninth all the way up to 78th or down to 78th? Yeah, uh so at that time reclassifying and stuff was big. Okay. That's when a lot of Older dudes was reclassifying to my to my grade. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Stuff like that, and honestly, I stopped growing. Okay, I stopped growing. I feel like even though I was cold, I did get overlooked by because of my height. Mm -hmm. I stopped growing. A lot of dudes were bigger. Who were who? A lot of if you look, a lot of dudes that was ranked higher than me were bigger than me. Everybody was bigger than me. Okay, it wasn't too many five nothing players that were ranked. Right, you know what I'm saying everybody was six two bet or better. Okay. A lot of do it. So I, I feel like that played a major role in it. But I don't make excuses. Uh, I feel like I played good enough at the time to still be top whatever. Sure. Probably not number one, probably not top 10, but I could have definitely been top 20 for sure. Okay. So now this is this is the crazy part about this whole transfer rule. And, and we're going to get to the Michigan State portion in a second, right? So now – 
because of the and I, I'm, I know I'm bouncing a little bit. So let's just go back to the to the high school thing, um, because what I want to mention, too, is the reason as to why transferring is so kind of like frowned upon now when it comes to high school is because of this man that y'all looking at on the screen right now. Hey, uh, it is not all my fault. It listen, bro, look, top basketball players exploit rule loopholes. The transfer rules is unofficially termed the Corey Lucius rule. This is from the WIAA, Wisconsin Interscholactic. I, I don't know if I said that right, but you know what I meant. Um, Athletic Association. This is coming from them. The transfer rule is termed the Corey Lucius rule after Michigan State freshman who transferred from Milwaukee King to Pius after a sophomore season in 2006. He was one of four transfers who came to Pius from other schools that uh, from, from other schools that year. Sorry about that. Moves that increasingly enough did not pave the way for the WIA State Tournament. Um, appearances in, for the Popes in 2007 and 2008. We could have. Though, those two years he just mentioned, we definitely could have went upstate and probably won. Okay. Other, other things happened. Other things happened. Okay, so reading that and you being a culprit of this transfer loophole, how, do you, how does that make you feel? I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm like, I feel pretty like damn good that I got a rule named after me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, talk, cool. talk, talk, I hate, talk. I hate, <laughs> I hate <laughs> that. Yeah, I hate that kids now can't. I mean, you got to deal with it and they have to go through it because I feel like if you want to transfer, if you're not happy, why should you have to sit out a year? But it, it happens in college, so I understand it now. But, right. High school, I feel like if you want to transfer, of course, and then at the same time, you might have team stacking, so maybe it's not a good idea. Sure. But I get it. If you would need to transfer for whatever reason, it might be personal reasons. I'm sure they had appeals and stuff to go against that, but transfer. Let them kids transfer somewhere else and let them play. No, I got it you. wasn't. And for that rule, it wasn't my fault. Like, if okay. you read that again, it said four other players. <laughs> I know it said four other players, but what, was those other flare, players highly touted the way that you were? Nah, man. Okay, okay, so that's the reason. Let's get to the crux of it, man. If we're going to unpack it, let's unpack it. You know the reason why that damn rule was in is, was in effect. Because Corey Lucius went. Yeah. Nah, it's a problem. I got you. Man, let us do our thing, man. Let me, let, me, right. let me live, man. Right. So now you sign with Michigan State, right? You sign with Michigan State. You there with Tom Izzo, you there with uh, Draymond Green, Kalen Lucas. Who are, who else are you there with? Because Draymond graduated the same year you did, right? Uh, he what? Actually, I did an extra year, and you know I left with the Iowa State. He graduated in 2012. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about no. He graduated high school, high school which high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so y'all was freshmen together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who else was there with you? Uh, whew, me, Delvon Rowe. If anybody remember him, yep. he was top five in the country coming out of out of high school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so y'all go do y'all research if y'all don't know. But me, Delvon Rowe, uh, Draymond, uh, Kalen Lucas, uh, Raymar Morgan, Travis Walton, Chris Allen, Darrell Summers, Gordon, Goran Sutan, mm -hmm. uh, Marquise Gray, uh, man, Isaiah Dahlman, man, we had, we had some killers, man. My freshman year at Michigan State, woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, no for red sure. shirt, no nothing over here. I'm playing too. I'm playing. Yeah, talk, no man. Red so, shirt, no nothing, man. So, two things that I want to ask you real quick before we dive into the basketball. At, well, th this is basketball related, of course, but before we dive into the on court stuff, um, mm -hmm. what was it like an average day for for a freshman in college? What was your average day like at Michigan State during basketball season? Average day at Michigan State, so it was tough, man. It was, man, a lot of people don't really understand. Like when you go to to a top school and you sign to go to a top school, like they really own you, right? Like, I hate to put it like that, but they do. So the typical day was probably waking up at five thirty, five forty five to get to a six a.m. six thirty lift. Um, after that lift, you probably go eat some breakfast or whatever the case may be. Go to your couple classes. If you got any um, practice, probably sometime in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, 
for, uh, for like two hours. Then you go straight to study table. Uh, you got tutors and stuff to help you there. Mm-hmm. And after that, probably get a workout in at, at night. Maybe you put some shots up or something, some shots up or some on a gun or go through a whole workout and then head to the crib, go to sleep, probably play the game or something before I go to sleep. But and then repeat the same thing. <laughs> repeat the, the next day. Yeah. So how was it like playing for Izzo? It was an experience, man. I'm not going to lie. Coach Izzo is one of the greatest coaches to ever to, to ever walk this earth. Okay. Uh, I feel like he would do a great job in the NBA as well. Mm-hmm. But he's had so, so so much success at Michigan State, Wiley, to me. Right, exactly. But he was great, man. It was, it was tough. It was tough playing for him. Mm-hmm. It was very tough. If you wasn't mentally tough, physically tough, you would quit or transfer in a second. You're not talking- the reason why I transferred at all, but oh, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. Yeah. If if you're not built for it, is he could definitely he could definitely make or break you. A lot of shit talking. Make or break you. A lot of shit talking. He'd do little stuff to get under your skin. Mm-hmm. Um like I I don't want to give his secrets away. I don't know if he still do this, but he'll call you over during the timeout or no a free throw or something. Mm-hmm. Never did this to me because you know I'm saying I'm not I'm not going. I'm from Milwaukee. I'm not going. Okay. He'll either, like, you know what I'm saying, pinch you, pinch you right here real hard, mm-hmm. or he'll step on your foot while he's talking to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something like that, though. Okay. And he had little tactics to get under your skin. and Okay. Yeah, so it was tough playing for him. Um, it was tough, man. I'm not going to lie. Even okay. him as a – but him as a coach, overall, it was fun. I had – it was great, man. I experienced so much. I experienced so much going to that school – that I'm forever grateful for him and everything like that. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so let me ask you this, though. Okay, so your freshman year there, right? You're not starting your freshman year, are you? No. You're not starting your freshman year. You're coming off the bench. Um, who are you playing behind? Kaylin Lucas. Kaylin Lucas. How many – what were you, what were you averaging minute-wise per game? My freshman year? Mm-hmm. Maybe 12. 12 minutes? Okay. Were you um, – how far did y'all go – your freshman year? Championship. We lost to North Carolina by 20 in a championship game. In a championship game. Did you play a lot in your champion, in a championship game? First half, I played – actually, I had seven points in the first half. And I don't think I saw the floor until the end of the game in the second half. Okay. Um, like, that's what I'm saying. It was it was tough playing for Izzo, man. It was tough. For me, for me it was. Because coming okay. out of Milwaukee, you know how we play. We saw – yeah. I, I got a type of style of play that everybody know how I play. Right. You knew that for me coming into Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Coming into Michigan State, it was like he didn't really like it. Okay. You know what I'm, saying? I'm not going to say he didn't respect my game. Mm-hmm. I feel like he did, but. Yeah, you got a full ride. He wouldn't have given you a full ride if he yeah, didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it was like little stuff that I might I used to hear sometimes, like, this is not and one. Mm. Like. I couldn't really shoot floaters. Mm. I used to dribble to my leg between my legs too many times. It was a problem and stuff like that. So it was tough. I really, I ain't really get to play the way I know how to play basketball. Okay. Until, I learned a lot. Yeah. I grew as a player for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but I was, I was, I didn't play court basketball. It was okay. Tough. So fast forward into your sophomore year, right? So we're gonna go to your sophomore mm-hmm. year now. So Kalen Lucas is gone now, right? Your sophomore no, he's still – my sophomore year, yeah, he's gone. He's gone your sophomore Wait, year. That's his junior year. My sophomore year – oh, he's still there. He's still there. Okay. Sophomore year is the shot. He was still there. He got hurt. We're going to talk about that. We're going to get there. Um, sophomore year was that. Did you um, – so, but you're seeing increasing minutes your sophomore year. Yeah, I, you're yeah seeing for increasing sure. Minutes your sophomore year. Were you starting your I, sophomore year? Nope. Okay, go back. Go ahead. What are you going to say something? Yeah, let, me, let me push back a little bit. A lot of people don't even know this. So my freshman year, before the season and practice and stuff, I was on the starters board. Killing starters board. With Kaylin, though, I'm on the starters okay. board. Okay. Whatever. It didn't happen. I ended up starting halfway through my year, myself, my freshman year. I was ready to transfer. Really? Ready to go. I was ready to go. Okay. It don't sound good, but and I don't want – Maybe that was my problem as a basketball player. Like, if something, wouldn't say get got tough, but if I felt like something was going my way, 
or if I didn't really like it, I was ready to jump. Really? Like, okay. And, and that was probably, I was ready to jump. Like I was still, Florida was still wanting me to come there. Okay. I was still talking to Florida. And you would have been with Irving Walker to, down in Florida, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I would have been with her. I was still, I was, I was, about, I was ready to go. But really? my mom, thank God, she talked me out of it. My okay. dad was with it, like, he wasn't with it, but he was like, I'm saying whatever you want to do, you got to do what's best he, for you. He understood. My mom, like, he understood it. Yeah. Okay. My mom, like, hell no, you ain't going nowhere. So, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm I couldn't go nowhere, but yeah, I was ready to go my freshman year, but sophomore year come around, I'm playing a little bit more. Okay. Uh, my minutes went up. I probably was averaging probably mm, close to 20, maybe 16, 17 minutes, something okay. like that. How are you playing on the court at this time? Are you playing pretty good on the court? Oh yeah, I'm balling. Okay. I'm playing good, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so so the first round of the tur tournament comes, who do y'all play in the first round of the tournament? My sophomore year? Yeah, do you remember? Mm, I think it was New Mexico State. New Mexico State, so y'all smack New Mexico State. We get to the <laughs> second round of the tournament, y'all playing Maryland in the second round of the tournament, right? Yep. Second round of the tournament. And in the second round of the tournament, wait, 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 did we? No, I think we might have played. Okay, you're right. Yeah, I think it was Maryland. Then we played Northern Iowa, and then we played Tennessee. Your sophomore year. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why Maryland, I, yeah. I bring up the Maryland situation is because of this situation here. All right. Let me just cue this up for you, brother. Player of the year, taking it right at Morgan. Right at Raymar Morgan. 6.6 .6 left. Draymond Green finds Lucius for the win. Yeah, Lou. Yeah, Lou. He's moved to the screen. Do you remember? I mean, like, I'm going to just let this go a little bit more. Look at Draymond. Put it on the deck with the ball fake. Oh, it's, it's good. It's good. Michigan State advances to St. Louis. What was the um, meet me in St. So, dope shot, by the way. Which is, and that's a, that's that's an NCAA memory. Didn't you have to record something last year for the uh, for NCAA because of that? Uh, I don't think so. They, they didn't ask you to record something for like the best NCAA memories. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They did. Okay. I know. I think that was uh, Wilson basketball. That was Wilson basketball. <laughs> it was for the tournament, though, right? And because yeah, it was Wilson for the was tournament, yeah. tournament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. That ends up happening, man. And um, what 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 was going through your mind after the shot? Because this was against, like I said, it was a four against five. So this had to be. It was the second round of the Midwest region when this happened. Yeah. What's going through your mind after this? Man, <laughs> pandemonium, bro. Pandemonium, yeah. bro. Yeah. Like, damn, I really just hit that motherfucker. Like. Yeah. Yeah. But but I wasn't really surprised because. These are shots that I worked on all my life. Okay. From okay. My dad and yeah. by myself. Like these yeah. are shots that I work on. Even though it's the timing, I've always been one of those. Like I've hit multiple game winners in high school and mm -hmm. AAU and stuff like that. So that type of moment wasn't really no nervous moment and nothing like that. But at the time when I made them, like shit, that motherfucker went in. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And if you okay. if you see the video, like the way I kind of like. Look back at the crowd after I oh, yeah. it, like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. knew that was going in. Right, for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, this particular year, y'all end up losing when? Lost in the Final Four to Butler. To, to Butler. To the championship. Yeah. Was that Gordon Hayward? Yeah. yeah. Yep, lost to Gordon, Gordon Hayward. Hayward. Yep, yeah. in, the, in the Final Four. Okay. Yeah. So, and then something happens, right? Something happens. Um, I don't know if it was in the off season. I don't know when it happened, but something happened to make you transfer to Iowa. Uh, so, so you know, I start. I started my junior year. At, I I played my junior year. Like 
up to up until like Jan- December or January at Michigan State. That's right. You I started, did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I started the season. It. Remember, yeah. I played. We played Duke. That was my junior year when I went yeah, that's to right. Jonah. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun a little bit. So you start no, your junior year. Yeah, you you start your junior year. Um, you play probably right up until uh, conference time, right? Yep. yep. Like right up until conference time, and then yep. something happens to make you transfer into Iowa State. Mm-hmm. I'll let you get into it because. You know, we all heard the stories about why it ended up, why you ended up transferring. If anybody was, you know, following basketball at that point in time, anybody from the area, you you heard the story as to why you ended up transferring to Iowa State. Um, mm-hmm. I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, man. So junior year started off good, uh, playing more minutes. Wasn't starting, but I felt like I've done enough to be starting for sure, but – I wasn't starting. Kalen was still there. He had just one player of the year, I think his sophomore year mm-hmm. in the Big Ten. So, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, I want to start. That's fine. I accept my role. I accepted my role my freshman year. Well, just, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. But at the time, like, I'm young. We were young. You know what I'm saying? I was young. I was from Milwaukee. I've experienced to at this point more than I've probably ever experienced in my life. Okay. Basketball wise, traveling wise, and stuff like that. Just the whole Final Four, Michigan State, and all of that stuff. So you know, at, at that age, you're going to party. Right. Not even party, but you're going to have some fun. Yeah, you're going to pick it. Fun. Right. I was smoking. I was smoking weed. Okay. Like, that was what I did. I okay. was smoking weed. So throughout the season, even though throughout the season and stuff, I was doing what I was doing. We were smoking. Uh, we, I, I, it came to a point in time where I think I had maybe failed my first drug test there. Okay. So I failed my first drug test. So after I failed that one, you go through the stuff with the doctors and stuff like that. You might have to do a team consequence, whatever the case may be. I did all of that. I had to see who I had to see. Mm-hmm. So I stopped smoking. Mm-hmm. But so we go on the road. This is when we go on our little road trip. I stopped smoking. I, I haven't smoked in like six months, I say probably four, four or five months. I don't know, something like that. Okay. So we go on the road. First game we play is at Duke. We play Duke okay. at Cameron. At Cameron, okay. Oh, crazy. If anybody okay. can go back, y'all can go look at this game. Had 21 and, 21 and eight on one of y'all favorite point guards on Kyrie. Okay. And Duke, Kyle Singler, Nolan Smith, all of them was on that game, you know, on that team. Okay. If y'all go back. I had 21 to 8 on them on that game. So the next game we played, we had to go fly to New York to play at the Garden. Okay. Like Syracuse at the Garden. So after this Duke game, I'm like, damn, hell. Was that like the ACC off. Big Ten Challenge? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I'm like, hell yeah, we just got off. I just got off. I'm doing nothing. Coach, after the Duke game, coach, like, because then nobody really do nothing. Nobody else was killing. Mm-hmm. Our starters ain't do nothing. Nobody else did anything. I had 21 and 8. The okay. long soldier out there by myself. You feel right. me? Right. So after the game, it's like, all right, we're going to switch the lineup up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So we got some new starters. Who this? He didn't say who, but he, that's what he said. Okay. I'm like, all right, bet. Shit, I just got off against Duke. I know I'm going to start. Right. What? I know I'm going to start when we play Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Syracuse game come, I'm not starting. He ended up starting. If y'all, everybody probably know Keith Afflin. Yeah. Um, so he ended up starting. I think this might have been his freshman year. Mm hmm. He started Keith Afflin. Pissed. Pissed. I'm pissed. Mad. Okay. Me being young, though, handle it the wrong way. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm super mad. I go out to Syracuse game. I probably had like seven points. Didn't really play, though. I didn't right. really play that much. You know what I'm right. saying? I think I probably played like 15 minutes that game after going crazy on Duke. Okay. So I'm pissed. I'm mad. We fly back after the Syracuse game. You know, we go straight to the crib. I hit my guy ASAP. Being stupid and young, I hit my guy. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I had something rolled up for me. I'll be there. We'd back be, at Michigan State. Back at Michigan State. Mm-hmm. I will. We'd be there in like three hours. You know we got our own our, our own flight. We ain't got to worry about none of that. We ain't got to yeah. worry about going through security. Yeah, yeah. None of that. We got our own plane. Yeah. 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 I'll be there in three hours, bro. We flying from New York. I get back. I go smoke. I go smoke like two or three blunts. I go smoke. Stupid. So whatever. But I got it in my head because the conference finna start. Mm-hmm. I got it in my head like, all right, 
I got some time to get this out of my system. We finna play conference. We finna practice. I'm finna be sweating. Ooh, this, ooh, that. Like, I ain't got to worry about it. So we end up playing Illinois. It was our first conference game in okay. Champaign. We okay. Illinois at Illinois. I ain't really do nothing that game. After that game, the next day, so we got randomly drug tested. We had just go in the weight room one day, be lifting. They were like, oh, yeah, we all getting tested. If you leave, you automatically fail. Mm. I'm sitting there like, God damn. Yeah. Like, mind you, the whole week, like, we just play like back to back to back games. So we didn't really have a lot of time for practice. Mm-hmm. We didn't really have a lot of time for practice. We was kind of like shoot around type, maybe one practice, a lot of film, because we got to get up and go on the road. Mm-hmm. So I ain't get enough sweat in, I ain't get enough workout in, none of that. I go into uh, take the drug test. I'm like, man hope for the best right i take it like a day or two later i ain't gonna lie i was so paranoid them next two days Mm -hmm. i was paranoid because i'm like Mm -hmm. damn it's a chance i might pass but stay stay paranoid stay (laughs) it's a great (laughs) chance that i'm about to fail so right i get the call from the doctor yep bam you failed Mm -hmm. that i'm like fuck Mm -hmm. i already failed one not too long ago so i know the second one is OVs, man. Yep, yep, yep. Whatever. Call me. I go to practice, man. I go to practice, get dressed for this. I go upstairs to get shots. So we got to be at practice in college. So I, you better be on the court an hour before. An hour you know, before, man. right, exactly. An yep. hour before practice start doing okay. something. I don't care if you're getting taped. I don't care if you're shooting free throws. But you better be upstairs ready to go an hour before practice. Mm-hmm. So I'm up there. I'm about to get some shots up. Uh, Who was that? I think the uh, equipment manager come to me like, Coach is want to see you in his office. Mm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. Heart beating, walking up the stairs, beating, pounding, pounding, yeah, pounding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. Get to that office. The talk come. Yeah, yeah. You know, you failed your second drug test. I'm like, man, tears instantly. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. Like, how could you do this for your family? You work so hard to get here. Woo this, woo that, yeah. bro. The talk. Mm-hmm devastating bro it's one of the hardest things i've ever been through in my life bro and i've been through a lot right right i've been through a lot so like that that was a hard talk with him Mm -hmm. and me knowing i gotta tell my mama that yeah like i gotta tell my mom so the way he broke it down to me like i didn't necessarily have to leave michigan state Mm -hmm. but if i would have stayed i was gonna have to sit out a year anyway Mm. And this is how he told me. So I'm like, shit, I might as well leave. Yeah. I don't want to stay here and have all these people ask me all these questions. I got to deal with this. I got to yeah. deal with that. Okay. I didn't want to deal with it. I just mm-hmm. didn't, to be honest. So I'm like, I tell him in and there, like, I'll, I'll go. I'll leave. So you told him right uh, there? Yeah, I told him right then and there, like, I'll leave. I think it's best that I just leave because I don't want to deal with all that stuff. Oh, the, the scrutiny, like a, the, the press, the yeah. scrutiny, all that. Do you, do I you, want to deal with it. Do you still have a relationship with him? Yeah, so we still, t- every now and then, like he'd send me a random message, I sent him a random message, but I think two years ago I went back to Michigan State. That was my first time being back since okay. I left. But it's dope that y'all can still have a, a relationship yeah. after that because it seems as if he raised you to be a young man. Yeah, for sure. Not, he, not, he, he not, not, of course, not taking away from your father, what your no, father yeah. did forever. But yeah, like he, he played an integral part college of coach. Yeah. yeah, he played an integral he part of that. Hours, countless of hours with your college coach for show on the road, practice yeah. time, weight room, whatever the case may be, film room. We spend countless of hours in the room. That's dope that y'all, so. still, that y'all still have a relationship. Um, so, do you want, is there anything else that you want to talk, touch on about the Michigan State situation? Uh, no, not really, man. That was just, that was the time of my life. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. Like going to Michigan State, I think to a certain extent, I always grew up to be, you know, my parents always taught me to be humble. Be humble right. and never be, and never get consistent. Those are two things they always, or, or not consistent, complacent. I'm complacent, got gotcha. you, got gotcha. you. Complacent, I'm sorry. Yep, no, so you could. Always be humble because it could be taken away Sure. Just as fast as you got it. As you got it, for My sure. parents taught me that since I was start getting this fame, if you want to call it that. Right, right. Part of it, since fourth, fifth grade. Right. And never be complacent. That was two things they always taught me when I was growing up. So, 
like I, I I feel like to a, at a certain to a certain point to a certain extent I kind of took Michigan State for granted. Mm. Like that's 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 good to say, especially for the younger kids that's out there listening, man. You you know you get these opportunities, and like yeah. you, like you said, you can't take them for granted because you just like that, it, easy as you got it, you be it taken be away. taken away. Like yeah. I was, I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was caught up in the stuff that came with Michigan State, but. I mean, because it's a lot that comes with that. It's a lot, man. It was Tra- a lot. Traveling first yeah. class, like you got first class traveling, you got first class amenities, you got everything to your disposal. It felt like I was in the NBA. Yeah. It felt like I was in the NBA. Shoes out the ass. If I wanted a new pair of shoes for the game, I could get a new pair of shoes. Mm-hmm. Like gear out the ass. First class, travel, yeah. first class travel. First class travel. Snacks when you get on the and whole bucket of snacks, just like yeah, the NBA yeah. players from. It was the same lifestyle, to be honest. Saying yeah. you're always gone, like you're getting so much attention from this person, that person, this person online, who this. And then when Instagram start blowing up, you get more attention. Like I took it for granted. I'm not gonna lie. I took yeah. it for granted. So like, what made you what made you ultimately transfer to uh oh I know what made you do it, but why did you choose Iowa State? Uh really just because it was close. I wanted to, I wanted my, my people to be able to watch me play my last year in high my last year of college. So why Michigan not State was only five not, years. Yeah, why not Marquette? Why not um, Wisconsin? Why not something like that? Wisconsin was out of the, out of the picture be, just because of their offense. I never liked their offense at that time. Understand at that time. That swing off wasn't getting sure. it. Yeah, that swing offense wasn't getting it. Swing offense, yeah, it wasn't. And I, I didn't want to – I wanted to be close to home, but I didn't want to be home. At home, yep. So, so that's, that's why, why – Yeah, and Marquette, you know what I'm saying? Talk. They act like that. They act like they didn't want to. <laughs> when I when they found out I was transferring, they called my pops. They called Izzo. They was I never me personally. I did because they couldn't talk to me. They called. They tried to get in contact with anybody they could for me to come there. And then like when the reports came out that they were interested, they went behind. and was like, no, we don't want him. I don't. So I don't, they it was over for them. So what are we? So let me ask you this, then Corey. Before before we move on to. We, and we're going to touch on briefly on Iowa State, just briefly, and then I want to get to your pro career, okay? Um, were the reports accurate? And you can just give me a one-word one, pay, one word answer. Which ones? The reports of why you, your dismissal from Michigan State, were they accurate? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What they say, like team conduct or something like that? Uh, yeah, uh, um, conduct detrimental to the team. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, so okay. Um, so Iowa State comes, you're there for just one year at Iowa State. Um, how was it playing at Iowa State and how was it playing for um uh Hoyer? My man's oh, Hoyberg. Hoyberg, Hoyberg, I'm Hoyberg, sorry. Yeah. yeah, my bad. It man, listen, if I could have had him for four years, mm-hmm. yeah, he was like that though, but he played in the NBA. Right. So he was a player's coach. Like he right. played, he'd been in the front office. Mm-hmm. He'd been around the NBA, you know what I'm saying? So he know what it takes to get there. He know what type of coach and what type of players. You know? So he was great. Man, that was probably the most fun playing basketball I've had in since high school. Oh, wow. Okay. Since high school, to be honest. So after – and like I said, I just wanted to touch briefly on Iowa State. So let me ask you this real quick before we move forward. Would you consider yourself a Cyclone or a Spartan? Both. They both to my heart, man. I spent three years in the nitty gritty, and said I've been in wars with them guys over there in that green. I've been yeah. in wars with them, so I know. if they play who, if they play each other, who you going? Who you going with? Uh, listen, I might have some Spartan sweats and a Iowa State hoodie. Okay, I ain't, I'm not choosing. Okay, I got you. Let, let, let the best man win. I'm a Cyclone Nation for show, and I'm a Spartan dog at heart for show. Got you, man. Got you. That's 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 what's up. Um, so after your senior year, you go undrafted, mm-hmm. right? After your senior year, were you getting any interest at all? Did you did you have an first of all? Did you have an agent coming out of college? I did have an agent. Yep, I did. Were you getting Were you getting any traction from any NBA teams at that time? A couple. So I had a few workouts. I didn't really have teams that were like too super. Like, yeah, we want you. Yeah, yeah, like that, but it was a chance that I could go late, super, super late second round. Who, I had who are those teams? Phoenix. They had a late. They had a couple late second round picks that year. 
Detroit had a couple late ones. They actually took Peyton Seaver with the last pick. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, Washington. Uh, who else? I think I worked out with Indiana. Uh, the Bucks. I worked out with them. Did you? Um, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Hold on, real quick. Hold on. Let me see something real quick. You worked out with the Bucks. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Did you? Okay. On Wednesday, the Bucks continued their Lucius. six more players in, and this group was headed by locals Trent Lockett of Marquette and former Pius High School star from Iowa State, Corey Lucius. Uh, it's a blessing. Um, it's just uh, when a dream come true. I mean, everybody want to play in front of their home crowd. Uh, it's good to get this opportunity to come back and get a chance to show what I could do and possibly get oh, a chance Brooks to play logo. in front of my team. So just making most of my opportunity, and I thought I played pretty good. I'm just playing everything by ear right now. Uh, I just came from Detroit on Monday, and this is my second one, so hopefully they can keep coming so I can show teams what I can do. Uh, last weekend, I was actually in Vegas for a pro day, and I think it was about 30 teams out there. So, uh, I mean, that was the only workouts I have right now, but hopefully more will come. Uh, sit you remember that, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I'm sitting in front of greatness, man. I'm sitting in front of a superstar. Um what what did what did that opportunity just the opportunity of being even considered at the highest level when it comes to basketball how did that make you like what type of confidence did that give you man the utmost yeah like all the, all the work that i've done in the past had not finally paid off but it was paying off okay I, mean, I wasn't there yet but i was getting there i was it was coming i was close okay so I, it felt good it felt good to even for the Bucks to even bring me in and the other teams that did as well, it, it, it was a blessing to be honest. Because a lot of people don't get that chance, and a lot of people don't. Okay, so after after this happened, and you don't you go undrafted, you get picked up by a summer league team, right? Mm -hmm. What was the summer league team that you get picked up by? Excuse me, no problem. Uh, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit what? picked me up after. Uh, I actually had two workouts there. They was a, one of the two teams that brought me back for back-to-back -back workouts phoenix was the other but i had two workouts there and they, they you know, so they called me asked me to come play yep and where was the summer league held uh in orlando that was you know, you know what i'm getting to right you know what i'm getting to right yeah that's what i, that's, that's what I, I bumped into you yeah man so the funny thing is he's down in orlando during summer league i'm i live in orlando at this point in time and i'm downtown orlando when i go to this restaurant and I see Andre Drummond walk in. I see Peyton Silva walk in. I see the whole Orlando basketball team. Oh, I'm sorry, the Detroit basketball team, summer league team walk yeah. in. But also, one of y'all Bucks' favorite, Chris Middleton, was on that team too, y'all. Middleton was on that team, yeah. Ask, ask Chris about me. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He know. <laughs> yeah. So I walk in and I see them. And um, actually, I'm already there. And then they walk in. And then I, I look over, Corey. And Corey looked at me, and it was an embrace. It was yeah, an embrace. Sure. And it was so it was so crazy how that happened. And funny thing is, I ain't get no tickets to the summer league games though. No, you know Orlando, they got closed. It was closed. I'm messing with you. I'm messing. I'm with about you. to say, yeah, I ain't no spectators, man. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But it was it was crazy how that happened. Like that, y'all come get tickets from me, man. I got tickets. Yeah, man. It was it was crazy how that happened when I saw you down there. So. Um, it was just, I was just like, dude, what the hell? And I, I see you walking in. I said, oh, Summer League, duh. Yeah, you get picked up yeah, by, yeah. By, by Detroit. So, Summer League happens. Um, how did you play in Summer League? How do you think you played in Summer League? Man, I, to be honest, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to get me a job. Okay. At least the training came from somebody because I was out there boiling. and I think I averaged probably like, I think it was like 11, mm -hmm. like 5, 4 or 5, something like that. Sure. Some great plays, making some shots, all that. I played. I was balling. I ain't gonna lie, I was balling. I was balling. So you eventually didn't get picked up by any NBA teams at that point in time. And mm -hmm. um, in the 13 14 season, you signed with Rosa, what is it, Rosa Radam? Yeah, yeah. Where's that out of? In Poland. Okay. Poland. How did that go? Ricky year was. It was it, it was an experience for sure being that far away from home at that age. Um, my first time 
really out of the country. That was my first time out of the country and to go on my own. It was tough, man. That was one of the toughest things I've ever done. Like I've been through something. Like right. Michigan State was situation was one of the toughest things I've ever been through. But this is one of the toughest things I've ever done. Like I've, right. I've ever did. Go okay. over there by myself. But I played good, man. As a freshman, I mean as a rookie. And you if anybody I know a lot of my basketball players, my guys and fans and stuff, and my guys that do play know if you've ever played in Europe, man, it's probably one of – it's the most physical game ever. Like, it's way more physical than the NBA, I'm sure. It's more physical than any league I've played in over here. Mm-hmm. So, me being 5'11", 175 at the time, I, I played very well. I think I averaged probably like 12, 13 points, like five, six assists. Okay. Made the all-star game my rookie year. Mm-hmm. Uh, my team took third. They haven't took that. They haven't been that close in years. So it was a good year for me. It was a great year for me, for real. And then you end up going to um, that summer. Um, were you getting any NBA traction? Nope. Okay, so nope. you ended up signing back overseas, right? Yeah. For, yep. for, for, the, for the second year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where did you go the second year? Remember, I I started off in Hungary. Okay, I played there a little bit. It didn't really work out for me, man. It was it was a tough situation. I'm not gonna lie, and then try to make it no better. So I ended up getting out of there and going to Cyprus. <laughs> yeah. And how was that? And not gonna lie, man, I was out there balling. But <laughs> this is one thing that people don't. Another thing that they don't understand about Europe, like it's cutthroat. Man, it's yeah. cutthroat. It's mm-hmm. cutthroat. If the, if you if you don't get in the right situation or with the right coach or something like that, you can go home in a second. And yeah. that's what happened to me. They end up sending me home. Mm. They sent me home after I think two games. After two games, I had first game. I think I was averaging fifteen mm-hmm. after, after two games and maybe like five assists or something like that. But yeah, they end up sending me home just because. I, I I don't think the coach liked me. Okay. Like, then the summer of your fifteen, summer of uh, fifteen, did you get invited to the Golden State um, summer I league? I think that was summer of sixteen, maybe. Summer of sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yes, sir. Go get money. Yes, sir. I was going to work too. We're gonna look at this real quick. Nice pass. Nice dime. A super dime. With the man bun. That's <laughs> when I had some hair. Oh, Jesus. What is, where is this at? Oh, this is my rookie year in Poland. Okay. You got all the highlights. Okay. This is the same thing in Poland? This in Poland, but this like my second campaign in like 2015. Okay. This is you in Summer League. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, size up. Go get a bucket. Ah, come here. Oh, lefty. Off the left leg, too. Same leg, same hand. Okay. Yeah, talk your shit. Split that real quick. Left hand. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Belay. Nah, yeah, man. This is, uh, these are just some of your your, your pro highlights, man. Yeah. Watching this this type of of shit. Huh? This is all in Poland? Yeah, yeah, these in Poland right here. Watching these, be it'd be hard watching my highlights, man. Cause I always like, damn, I want to go hoop. <laughs> you always say that when you watch your highlights. Yeah, like I'm trying to go hoop again. Mm. I remember that shot. That was the first time my mom came. My mom man came over there. First oh time wow, the country and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. How would you sum up your pro career, Corey, while we're watching these stats, these highlights? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was – I don't know. I can't think of the word, but, man, it was it was short-lived, man. It was. It definitely didn't go as I thought it was going to go. Okay. Do you feel like you can still play right now? Ooh. Oh, for sure. I, I can go play in the league right now. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Come here, come here. here. Rap session. Oh my god. Get up off me. Oh my god. I feel like yeah. I feel like I can go play in the league right now, man. Like the game, my my style of play, the way I play the game, 
and especially now since you know I've 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 learned so much over the years. I think I definitely be able to go play, and it's it's a shame. It's sad, man. I never really got. You ain't gonna push nothing. Yeah, you ain't gonna push nothing. Uh, uh, dead uh, legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me that. I'm a DB too, y'all. Don't worry about it. I play real defense. <laughs> Good deal, man. A rocket mortgage. Super. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I mean, yeah, uh, man, I, it, it's tough, man. I, whew, I feel like I could have did so much more in my basketball career, but it just God had other plans for me, man. You know, stuff happened. Yeah, speaking of which, speaking of the other plans that, that he had for you, um, first of all, let me just go back to, I just want to ask you something real quick. When did your pro career come to an end? And are, let me ask you this, are you officially done? So, yeah, that's, that's, that's those are two questions right there. Um, I, I don't think it came to an end yet. Like, okay. The way I feel right now, my body and everything like that, I think I feel like I still got at least four or five more years in me, to be honest. But um, my okay. last year playing was in 2019, right before COVID happened. I was in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't have a, had an agent in probably like four years. So anything I've gotten in the last four years has been on my own. Okay. People just randomly hitting me and stuff like that. So, you know, if the right situation come along, I still do want to play. I still got the love for the game. It's hard because I coach now and I'll be watching my players and I'll be like, damn, I want to go hoop. I want to yeah. hoop and I want to yeah. hoop. So I do still got the love for it. I know I can play. So if the right situation come along, then come along, I mean, yeah, I'm gone. Uh, are you still drawing interest? Uh, as of late, no. Nah, I ever nobody. Like I said, I ain't have an agent either. So if I had somebody sure. who was probably working for me, then maybe he could tell me. But no, nah, nobody really hit me up no more. I might have some of my guys every now and then hit me like, "Hey man, I got this situation where they might want you to come play here or something like that." But like, if the situation ain't good, I ain't going. I'm not. I, I got can't, you. I can't. I got two kids now. I can't leave for nothing. <laughs> sure, I got you. Um, so now post, we're not going to retire you yet. We're not going to say that. So we're just going to say yeah, leave that up. right now. Yeah. We're going to say right now, right now you have going on your high school coaching mm -hmm. and you also have going on your state paranoid basketball Academy. Talk about that for a second. Your state paranoid basketball Academy. Man. So it, state paranoid was something that um, I actually heard somebody say it a few years ago. I think it was Isaiah Thomas. And I don't really. Little don't Isaiah really, Thomas or Detroit Piston Isaiah Thomas? Little Isaiah Thomas, the one okay. that was just in the league recently. Yeah. yeah got you. So if y'all ever watched like the book, of, his book of uh, Isaiah and stuff like that on YouTube, he used to like hashtag that a lot on his pages and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of cool. Like, man, stay paranoid. That could be for anything. Like, mm -hmm. you should always in life just stay paranoid because you never know who's after you. You never know who's trying to take your spot. You never know who's, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. And, like, since I haven't been playing basketball as of late, I I knew I wanted to – I had to stay around basketball because it's my joy. It's my passion. It's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about coaching, to be honest. I never wanted to be a coach. I never told myself, yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to be a coach. Mm -hmm. like, but I've always just had the gift of being able to teach the game. Got you. I've always had the gift, even when I was in eighth grade, my dad used to coach like little AU teams and I used to help him. Mm -hmm. So I've always had to go the gift of being able to teach, but the state paranoia stuff came along when I think like a year, probably a year ago, I finally just told myself like, man, like, uh, since you really done playing and you've experienced so much, why don't you just get a game to somebody else who probably need it or who want to hear your story or sure. who might need to want want to get to where you get got to? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I came up with the, with the academy. I really actually just started promoting it this year, even though it's been out for since last year. I didn't mm -hmm. really do too much with it, but now I really want to take it serious. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get guys and to where I know they can get to as long as they put the work in. And okay. if you're willing to put the work in, I'm willing to teach you. I'm willing to help you. So uh, anybody that's really willing to put work in, if you're in the Milwaukee area, y'all go to my, uh, my, my my YouTube. I'm not my YouTube, my IG page, State Paranoid Basketball Academy. Tap in with me and uh, set some appointments so we can get going. Is it an age restriction? No age restriction. Actually, my youngest uh, guy that I will start training is five years old. So 
Mm. Girls, boys, don't matter. Y'all come in. Y'all, I'm willing to teach pros, the game. whatever. Yeah, pros, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's gonna cost you. Might cost you a little. Might cost it's you a lot. Cost. But it's gonna it's cost. Gonna you. cost you. <laughs> so, it's gonna cost. Uh, That's yeah, what I got. I, like everything I've learned from from a young age, from my dad to pro level, to from Tom Izzo, from Fred Hoiberg to my pro coaches, from my high school coaches, from guys, even though. There's some things that happened between us that didn't, you know what I'm saying, that we fell out or whatever case may be that had me leave. But I've learned so much over the years in basketball. I just put on this one it out to everybody else. Give it back yeah, to it's the, no, it's, the it's youth, no, There's no use of having knowledge and information if you're not willing to share it. Yeah, for sure. And that's the dope for shit sure. that, you, that you just said. Is there anybody, before we get out of here, is there anybody that you want to shout out? Uh, My family. Okay. My people. My mom and my dad for having me, you know what I'm saying, bringing me in this world, making me the man I am today. Uh, my two kids, Cash and Giselle, I love y'all to death. Um, and everybody who's supporting me through this journey. For sure. Um, it's been a journey, man. And my guy, Alan, appreciate you for having me. All oh, no, no, nah, man. It's, it's, it's nothing, man. You, you did me a solid for coming on, so I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Um, once again, it was just something that I thought um, – it was just too much. And I learned some stuff, you know, like I'm thinking me coming into it, I got all this shit sold up as to what I was going to find, uh, tell you what I was going to ask you, all the stuff that I, that I thought I knew. You yeah. missed a couple things too. Did I? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a part. About that. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, you remember about the uh, uh, McDonald's game that, that came to Milwaukee in 08 that I was not a part of. Oh Yeah. Yeah. We can leave that for another day, though, man. Oh, we're going to do a part two. Yeah. we we'll do a part just, two. Just, like, just, just for my older people, that's the older our age guys that who know a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, when the McDonald's game came, it came here for me and I wasn't a part of it. So just think, I left King, guys was, I left King, guys was a coach there, guys was on the coaching staff of the McDonald's game. And I didn't play. So y'all do the math. I'm going to just leave it at that. Do the math and yeah, just leave it at that. I forgot about that. And you know what? That is, that's accurate. Dang, I forgot about yeah. that. I'm, I'm, yeah. slacking on, I'm slacking on my math. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but man, see, oh, it's good. On, professional, man. Come on, man. No, no, no. I got you. Yeah, no, but it's dope, man, because, you know, it's certain shit like that that needs to get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. your story got layers to it, and we need to ask those questions about the story. Not everything that I knew, um on my end after doing my research um i you know of course th- there was shit that i just learned from you you know what i'm saying so it, it's greatly appreciated i appreciate you man um for coming on for sharing this with us for enjoying this is dope, man no nah, no problem man I, and i appreciate you man i wanted to get just give you your flowers while we here man and um or you know be because you deserve them bro you definitely deserve them um let's do another toast before we get out of here Yes, sir. To life, health, wealth. Last but not least, sports talk. Once again, comment down below. Let us know what you're sipping on. Salute. Yes, sir. Follow. Appreciate y'all. And, yo, we're going to have you back, man, for sure. We're definitely going to bring you back. No, no, for real. Yeah, for real, we're going to bring you back. I am Alan. Kobe Z. Colburn. The host of Baseline, the Goal Line. Keep uh, tuning in because we got more content coming. I got, I got some more interviews lined up for y'all, and I'm gonna talk to Corey when we get off because he gonna he gonna throw me some lives for some people. That's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I got some more interviews coming, man. Um, so tune in to Baseline, the Goal Line. Share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Um, I am Alan Colbezi Coburn, the host of Baseline, the Goal Line, the illest sports podcast in the land. Peace and love. You know what?